What's up everybody? Abbas here from Golden Motor. Today I'm going to tell you about our newest build with the CYC Photon. So this is a super compact mid-drive motor right here. It is the lightest and the quietest mid-drive right now. It weighs only 3.3 kilograms, which is about 7, 7 pounds. And the best thing about it, it has a torque sensing pedal assist. But before I get into more parts about the build and the riding footage, let's see how this thing is built. Okay, so the first step is to take out your bottom bracket, your crank arms, and your cranks. On this bike, I've already done it, but if you need to know how to do that, I'll put the video on the top. The process will be a little bit different if you are removing a uh, press fit bottom bracket as opposed to a threaded bottom bracket. And I'll put the video for both of them on the top for you. So the next step is to install the chain ring. There is a cover on over here on the motor. So you just gotta use the tool that comes with the kit and take that cover off. And the direction, the aero direction is also on there where to turn. And then once you tighten it up, you have to tighten it up to 40 to 50 Newton meters of torque. So the next step is to install the chain ring on the motor. Uh, make sure it fits in properly all the way. And then um, you put the cover on there and make sure you tighten it uh, 40 to 50 Newton meters. Um, the, in the Photon, you have the option of having a chain ring as low as 34 tooth and as high as 50 tooth. And we are installing a 38 tooth today. Okay, so the next step is to install the motor on the bottom bracket, but before that we have to figure out what spacers we're going to be using. So the spacers will depend on what size your bottom bracket is. Uh, the current kit that we're using is meant for a threaded bottom bracket from 68 to 83. So an 83 millimeter bottom bracket will not need any spacers. The only spacers you might need on 83 is these 2.5 millimeter um, spacers just in case if your chain ring is hitting the chain stay or if you want to fix your chain line. For a 68 millimeter, you're going to need all three of the bigger spacers, which is 73 millimeter, uh, 7 millimeters, the 5 millimeter, and the 3 millimeter. So you're going to need all three of those for the 68 millimeter. This bike is a 73 millimeter bottom bracket. So on this one, we're going to need the 7 millimeter. Uh, spacer and the three millimeter spacer okay so the next step is to grease up the shaft if you have your own grease that would be awesome but the cyc it comes with a packet of grease with your kit so we're just going to use that and grease the shaft up okay so the motor is nice and greased up so before we put the motor in the bottom bracket, we have to space it out properly. So the smaller three millimeter spacer will go on the drive side and the seven millimeter spacer will go on the non-drive side. If your chain is hitting the chain stay, this is where that half a millimeter of spacers that came with the kit will come in to uh, fix that problem. And now let's uh, install the chain to check the chain line. And the good thing about the CYC chain, chain ring is that it's a narrow wide, so make sure you install your chain properly. So to check your chain line, make sure the chain is in the middle gear in the rear sprocket and then check your chain line. So this is a perfect chain line. Okay, the next step is to install the non-drive side bottom bracket cup. Make sure it's nice and greased up. Uh, then you would install the mounting plate first on it. And then after that, you would put the seven millimeter spacer. And the kit comes with three other additional spacers. This would be used if you have a bottom bracket that is a fatter one, like between 86 and 120. But since this one is a 73, you're not going to need any of these spacers. Okay, so after the threads are engaged, make sure you tighten it all the way. We're using a Lecky 
1644 socket. I'll put the link for this tool in the description below. Next step is to use those two spacers and the two bolts that come with the kit and then tighten the mounting bracket to the motor. Use a three millimeter hex to tighten the bolts. So the next step is to install the spindle. Make sure it goes in all the way. And the last part, you'll have to tap it in with the mallet. Just give it a nice little tap. Tap, tap, tap. The next step is to tighten the spindle to the non-drive side. Use the lock ring that's provided with the kit. There's two places where you can tighten it with the three millimeter hex. One is to tighten it to the threads and one is to tighten it against the bottom bracket. Next step is to install the cranks on both the sides. Make sure you install the left on the left and the right on the right. And then after that, make sure you tighten it down with the uh, bolt provided. Use the eight millimeter hex to tighten it down. And then after installing the cranks, install the pedals and make sure again, left on the left and right on the right. The next step is to install the speed sensor. So you're gonna use the eight pin female plug that is coming out of the controller. And then you line up the arrows and then you plug that in. And then the next step you would do is you would put the speed sensor on the chain stay. So the sensor side should be facing the spokes because the magnet is gonna be going on the spokes. And then there is a screw on the speed sensor where you can adjust the uh, height of it. So you want to be as close as to the sensor, I mean, as close as close to the magnet without touching the magnet. And then you use the two zip ties that came with the kit to tie the speed sensor to the chain stay. After you have the speed sensor on the chain stay, you install the magnet on the spoke. Once the magnet is close to the speed sensor without touching it, then you can tighten it with the flathead screwdriver. Okay, now time to install the battery. So we're gonna start off with installing the battery cradle. If you have these bottles, bolts on your bike already, it makes your life so much easier. Just take those out, put the cradle on and boom, you are done. Or if you do not have these bolts, then you can use a triple bob and this will attach your cradle to your down tube. Now let's plug in the main wiring harness to the controller. So this my wiring harness has two plugs coming out of it. The green one is for the display and the yellow one for the throttle. You have an option to get a wiring harness that has four plugs and the two additional plugs will be for the brakes. Okay, so now the last two steps of the build. So we're gonna install the throttle now. Uh, you have an option to get a thumb throttle, a half twist throttle, or a full throttle. The thumb throttle you can put either on the left side or the right side. We're going to go with the left side. 
and just use a three millimeter hex to tighten the bolt. Okay, so the next step is to install the display on the bike. So you have an option to install the DS-103 or the SW-102, depends on your preference. Uh, the DS-103 you can install in the center console and then you can install the pin pad on the left or the right. Or the SW-102 has a pin pad integrated, you can install it on the left or the right side. And just use a 2.5 millimeter hex to tighten the bolt. Okay, so the last step is to slide on your battery, lock it in with the key, clean up the wires, and now let's take it off for a ride. So guys, this was a super easy build. It came out nice and clean. The motor is tucked in nice, has like almost nine inches of ground clearance, so that is so awesome. Um, so this motor is rated at 750 watts, but it can go as low as 250 watts or as high as 1000 watts because this controller can give out up to 40 amps of discharge. So if you have a 52 volt battery, you can take this up to 1000 watts of power. Um, the torque sensing is integrated inside the bracket. There's even there's no wire coming out of it, too. So that's pretty cool. This thing has 110 Newton meters of torque. Um, I put the um, SW102 on here. Um, and it, it, and it uh, connects to a Bluetooth app. So if you want to make any changes, you can do that too on the fly. So I'm going to take this off for a ride and I'm going to tell you how I feel about it. The torque sensing on this is so smooth. CYC has a patent on this uh, torque sensing technology. They claim it is one of the best ones in the e-bike industry right now. So for you guys who don't know what torque sensing is, so for most of them are cadence sensors in the e-bike industry right now. So if I put it on pedal assist nine, which is very high pedal assist, and even if I touch the pedal in a cadence sensor, the sensor will just go on full. But in torque sensing, um, if I pedaling slow, like I'm doing right now, the motor is barely kicking in. But now if I pedal harder, it detects that I need more help and it kicks on even more. So that's the beauty of the torque sensing. So you can get up to three levels of torque sensing on here. I'm gonna be on three right now. Let me show you the acceleration on this thing. So I've ridden many e-bikes before, but this might be the quietest that I've ever ridden. <laughs> 